friends. It's very heartening to see all of you in such large numbers here. I think it's a testimony to Anjali's great popularity, but I also think it is because all of us do realize that the topic of this book, death is not the answer, is something that we need to take really, really seriously. Death is not the answer is not a self-help book, but I think it is a book whose time has come and it will be very invaluable to talk about it, to share it. I really applaud the courage of the speakers before me to share what has been a personal journey of trauma and then celebration. And I'm so deeply moved by it that I think that we really need no more except to salute you and your spirit and thank you very, very much, both of you and also Shafali, who was here. The first time I encountered uh, suicide was when I was in the ninth standard. And I'll read you a little bit from there. She stopped at the yet to be completed building, walked up 14 floors, then made her way to the terrace. She counted the steps to the edge of the building, looked down at the minuscule people going about their daily chores, and then climbed down. The next day she repeated the exercise. On the third day, she jumped to her death. She was my classmate, bright, intelligent, vivacious. The school was stunned into silence. Then the gossip mill started doing the rounds. She was a lesbian, and that explained her suicide. Till this day, I have no idea whether that conjecture was true or not. But even if she was, so what? The cruel fact is that at the age of 14, she had no one to guide her or talk her out of the darkness she felt engulfed by. Suicide fundamentally is an escape from an unbearable situation that is ironically a self-protective move, writes Dr. Anjali Chabria. Self-protective, if only, if only. Beat a broken heart, insecurity, failure in an examination, financial constraints, rejection from a friend, standing atop a building and jumping to your death should not be the way out. There is help, seek it. This is the message which not just the youth but all individuals who are vulnerable need to understand. Yes, life will not pan out the way we imagine it will and there will be times when we may not be in a mental condition to make the best decisions for ourselves. It is especially at times like this that we need to reach out to those who can help us rethink and reconsider. There is always another option. It has been said here before that in our society there is this unspoken fear that the minute you talk about a mental illness people will look at you as mad and they will make fun of you, they will deride you, which is why people do not treat mental illness in the same way that you would a physical illness. You would, if you had a heart problem, you would go to the doctor. If you ha had a headache, you would go to the doctor. So why when it is a physical, when it is a mental illness, do we worry about it so much? This book is an attempt to make us understand that there should be absolutely no shame uh, attached to it. And one of the things that Anjali told me that came as a real surprise to me was when I said that, you know, how do we recognize that somebody is, um, is sort of has a tendency to commit suicide? And she said they talk about it. And that came as a huge surprise to me because you know how we are. If somebody talks about suicide, we say, it's not drama kari, aise thodi koi baat karta. She would commit suicide. Now that is the wrongest thing. You have to pick up that signal. If somebody talks about suicide, that person needs help. This is something that we should all realize. In recent times, it's been said a lot that there are so many actors who are committing suicide. What is the reason for this? There's much speculation. There's always some TV actress that you hear about and then you say, oh, she had a boyfriend and there was a problem over there. Some kind of thing saying that, mm, you know, there must be some tendency because she is uh, an actor, that there must be something mad. Recent times, Robin Williams actually, when he committed suicide, it came as such a shock because, I mean, here was this person who had brought humor into their lives, whose sensitive portrayal in uh, Dead Poets Society, you, you believe that he had life at his fingertips. I have my own 
understanding and that's what I'd like to share with you. Acting is a very demanding profession. It demands that the actor remain in a state of perpetual emotional preparedness, ready to explode at the command, start sound, camera, action. Shot done, she is expected to effortlessly push back the emotional upheaval into storage and function normally. We are consistently asked to do the opposite of what civilized behavior asks us to do. Civilized behavior says control your emotions, don't show them. What does acting say? At the click of a button, emotion number 36, nickel kya ha, ro, 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 ke, they finally go back to being completely normal. Oh, haste ro, haste ro, and go back to life which is completely different. It has to take its toll. If you are a serious actor and if you're looking for your resources from life itself, these emotionally draining moments really take their toll on you. Inevitably, the residue of frequent emotional churning leaves its traces. No wonder actors are prone to being neurotic and highly strung. It is an adrenaline rush. Actors inhabit the world of the characters they play and willingly expose themselves to varied and demanding emotional roller coaster rides. This has many effects. The highs of success, the lows of failure. Coming under the glare of public scrutiny, all this often leads to anxiety and depression. Nobody believes this. An actor is supposed to be the epitome of confidence and positivity. Friends and family are often unable to understand this. Even small irritations start assuming the proportions of insurmountable obstacles. The more you struggle against it, the more tightly the depression holds you in its grip. At such times, you need professional help. Dr. Anjali Chhabria has equipped hundreds of vulnerable people with the ability to recognize symptoms of depression and find the strength to overcome feelings of hopelessness before it becomes too late. So, here's to Anjali Chhabria.